Peace and greetings, family. My topic of conversation is the origins of the modern day police department, AKA the slave patrollers. Now we've been watching on the news and we can't get away from the information that we've seen with Black Lives Matter and Police Lives Matter or All Lives Matter. And so recently, a couple of days ago, we saw um, that the prosecutor's office decided to dismiss Freddie Gray's case. Now, as much of a travesty of, of injustice that is, we have to ask the question, how did it get so bad? So you have to go back to the origins of the police department so that we can see what the intent and the purpose of the police department was in the beginning. Now, was it to protect and serve? Was it to, um, to stop criminal activity? The answer to the question is no. Now, when you look at the beginnings and inceptions of the police department, it came out of slavery. The slave patrol was originated by different states, different counties, different municipalities, and the government in order to protect the property rights of the slave, the rich slave owners. Also, you saw that the slave patrols were a mechanism and a tool to be able to control the actual uh, African descendant or the slave population to stop them from rising up and causing insurrection. Now, in 1704, South Carolina instituted its first slave patrol. Now, they used uh, county law and they made it mandatory for the white males to have to be a part of these slave patrols. In essence, they drafted these people into um, slave patrolling. The names we would hear was uh, patrollers, uh, patty rollers, patties. Um, when we think of the police departments, you when you look at their big vans or when they bring people in, you talk about the paddy wagons. All of this stemmed from back in slavery dealing with slave patrollers. Now, when you talk about the function of the slave patrollers, um, what were they? Well, the biggest function was for them to return the escaped slaves um, back. The second thing was to stop uh, revolt or insurrection. But the third was typically to, just to control, intimidate a particular population so that you can keep them in line. And that's exactly what they did. Now, these slave patrols, um, did not have a lot of money. So what they did have was whips and they had intimidation. And so their job was to go from plantation to plantation to make sure that there were no slaves walking around idly trying to escape. And each slave who was going from plantation to plantation, um, if they were given permission by their slave owners, they had to have a pass. And so the slave patroller's job was to look for this pass. But many times, even if they had a pass, um, their job was to intimidate uh, and scare these uh, slaves. Now, the slave patrol caught on through different municipalities and different counties. And so what you started seeing was the legalization and the codification of these particular organizations. Hence, we see an actual modern day policing organization that was given money by the local government and the local uh, municipalities. Even Congress passed laws um, dealing with runaway slaves. So when you have these group of white males who are forced, and they were forced to be able to, uh, to patrol the slaves, there was already resentment because they thought blacks were subhuman anyway. But now you're forced to leave your own home, your own property, um, regardless of who you were, unless you were a, a rich slave owner and you had to go out and spend your time patrolling black men and black women. And so you, it was set up with a hostile environment and slave, like I said, slave patrolling started in 1704 and it did not end into emancipation after the civil war. During the four years of the civil war, that first year you saw the slave patrollers escalate. Why? Because they knew that with the civil war, there'll be, um, uh, more and more of insurrection or uh, uprising of the slaves. So the, the government borrowed from the state militia in order to continue to control the slave population. Now, these slave patrollers, one of the things that they would do was they would come into these houses, the slave houses, randomly. They made sure that, one, they didn't have books. They made sure that they did not have excess items that could be mistaken to uh, view as if they were going to use this to run away with. Um, basically, they did whatever they wanted to do. And it didn't matter if you was a compliant slave. It didn't matter if you were a non-compliant slave. Most of 
the slave patrollers would in fact, in fact, um, beat, whip, um, all kind of just inhumane atrocities on the slaves. You know, one of the things that we know most for is the lynching. And you didn't have to have a real reason why you lynched a slave because the government, the so the local municipality, the counties, they made sure that the white man was exonerated. Now, in certain exceptions, if the slave patrollers brutally beat or killed one of the slave uh, owners um, property, then, you know, there was retribution from the slave owners. And it depend on who the slave owner was. So you see that you had these searches, these random searches, these um, arbitrarily and capricious searches. Um, so if you look at the modern day policing in the in um, the culture that we see nowadays and we're watching it unfold on TV as we go along, you see that that these police officers, modern day police officers, you know, they have no regard for people's rights. They have no regard for people's lives. And when you look at the origins and the philosophy and the culture and the the, the sentiments of where modern day police came from, a lot of times these police officers carry that particular um, sentiment um, in their policy and their control and their implementation and the government backs them up. And when comparing the modern day police officers to the slave patrols, the, the founding fathers of the police um, uh, department, what you what you see is um, you have the stop and frisk law where, you know what, black people are randomly stopped and frisk. You see the racial profiling is extremely prevalent among brown and black people. And uh, today I went to court and one of the things that kind of startled me and stunned me that I had to do research on and the prosecutor herself had to go and Google and see what this particular new weapon that the police department has is what you call the automated license plate reader. Yeah, the autom automated license plate reader. And what that is, it's a device that goes on top of the police car. It goes on top of billboards. It goes on top of signs. And what it does is a camera that works with fast moving objects. And it can record and take in the license plate and automatically allow that information from the license plate to come up to, to capture the person's individual information, whether they have any warrants. And so what you're finding now here in Houston, Texas, is that these officers will be posted up and they will have this automated license plate reader and they will in essence racially profiling certain particular cars they'll pull them over because they'll have a warrant for a traffic ticket and then because they have a warrant for a traffic ticket they'll do what's called a search incident to an arrest which they legally can do and then they'll find some type of contraband uh, something that's illegal or you know in case of dirty cops on the street, they'll plant drugs um, just so that they can get a conviction or get an arrest outside of getting a traffic, getting them to go to a, a traffic court dealing with their traffic ticket. So, you know, the modern day police department has so many tools that continues to, to uh, actually intimidate, threaten black people, uh, creates uh, an atmosphere of big brother or surveillance. They're continuously watching a group of people so that, that they won't rise up or have some type of insurrection, especially in this day, day and time, because you find in more and more um, people rising up against the injustices of the police department, the injustices of the of police brutality. And so now you have these tools and devices and these laws that are enacted so that we can, again, control a particular population of people and create more economics for the property owners. Now, I was in uh, last week, I was in a small county dealing with a case and the county may have had about 10,000 residents. 75% uh, of those residents were black. Now, the the county, um, the infrastructure of the county, it was terrible. You could tell it was a small town, but the courts and the police department, that infrastructure, you could tell that they put a lot of money in that infrastructure. And then what surprised me the most is when you're driving up, what you see is uh, tanks. I saw they had like three military, uh, I won't call them tanks, they were Humvees. And then when you walked into the police station, the first thing you saw was this w wall of past sheriffs and um, from from back into the 1800s. And then what you also saw next to that wall was a quilt in a frame. And in the quilt in the frame, it said, police lives matter. 
Now, you know, I knew immediately that what the sentiment was in that particular town. I knew that immediately that there were slave patrollers in that town. If you look at the history of that town, which, in fact, they did have slave patrollers. But when you look at what's going on now, it's modern day slavery. Uh, one example in that town, there was a man who had um, was charged for possession of a controlled substance. Um, very small amount. And a jury convicted him of 85 years in that particular small town, which was not uncommon for that particular small town. So why am I why am I talking about that? OK, so we're talking about slave patrols and modern day policing. And so during slave patrols, you're talking about economics and you're talking about the controlling of a particular group of people. Now, I want you to always focus on the money and anything that we see systematically and the systematic um, un injustices that w we deal with on a daily basis. At the root of everything is economics. And so when you have the government uh, feeding, you know, money into these uh, um, policing uh, municipalities, then you have to follow the money. The more arrests they have, you know, the more money that that particular county or that particular municipality gets from when someone goes to jail. They have to post a bond, and then they have to get a lawyer, and then they if they go on probation, they have to pro pay probationary fees and community supervision fees. They have to pay so much money into this particular criminal justice system. Now, if that's even if they make it out of there without going to jail, and then if they go to jail, then you talk talking about modern day slavery, modern day slavery, because they use these people in jail here in Texas, Texas Department of Correction. They have private corporations who um, come in and they ask to use the, the slave labor or the prison labor in order to, cr to produce or create their products. So here we we have again, we have the policing department who's being used unknowingly, maybe or, you know, or unwittingly knowing that um, they're being used to sustain an, this economy based on slave labor, modern day slave labor. When you look at the history of slavery and when the slaves were emancipated, what did they do? They created these uh, sla these codes, these black codes or the Jim Crow laws in order to continue to criminalize or institutionalize these black people so that they can continue with the economic prosperity of the former slave masters. And so if you criminalize them, you put them on a plantation, you put them on a farm, you put them in a prison farm and you force them to work for free. Again, modern day slavery, modern day policing. You look at um, what happened with Freddie Gray just recently and how these police officers were exonerated and they got to walk away. And so we're concerned that there is no justice. But the thing is, you have to ask the question, was the system set up to give us justice in the first place? And the answer is emphatically no. So what do we do about it? We continue to fight. We continue to stand up. I'm doing my job by bringing light to the reality and the truth and the origins of where this came from. And so when we realize that this particular institution was never meant to protect and serve us, it was never meant to give us justice, then we must stand up and find out and fight what is it that we need to do for ourselves in order to have justice? One, you have to get these dirty cops out of our neighborhoods. Let us be able to patrol our neighborhoods. Let us be able to secure our own neighborhoods. Give us the resources so that we may protect and serve our own people and get this particular institution of people out of our neighborhoods who were never set up to protect and serve us in the first place. So I just want to encourage um, black people, minority people, let's continue to do for ourselves. Because if we are looking to someone else to do for ourselves and expecting justice, then we are suffering and will continue to suffer the consequences of this injustice. Allow us to protect and serve ourselves. Thank you.